today's lesson. Today we're going to look at solving quadratic equations by graphing. The kinds of things that we would like to solve are equations like this one. Uh, 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 equals 0. And what we're really looking for is whether some numbers exist such that if we replace the x by that number, it's going to make this thing equal to 0. It's going to make the equation work. How do we find these things by a graphing method? Well, what we do is we take this equation and we say, hmm, suppose I said y equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Now that's very similar. The only difference is this was a specific equation that equaled 0. And this time we have this quadratic function which equals y. Now a quadratic function has no one solution because you're relating x's and y's. When you uh, plug in different numbers for x, you get different y values, and those are points that we can graph. So what we're going to do is graph this related function. Now how does this related function help us to figure out um, what the answer to this original equation is? Well, let's get a picture first of all. And uh, to speed the process up, I'm going to use a graphing calculator to produce this picture. Okay? If you didn't have a graphing calculator, sadly you would have to use the old table of values method um, or some of the tricks that you learned in the previous chapter in order to produce the picture. Um, the table of values method is simply a matter of uh, x and y plugging in a whole bunch of different x's into this and trying to uh, establish what the y values are, plotting those points, connecting them, and voila, there's your picture. Um, for example, you could plug in 0, always a nice one, uh, 2 times 0 squared plus 5 times 0 minus 3 turns out to be negative 3, so there would be one point on our graph and we would need several more. But I'm going to speed the process up by using the graphing calculator. Now, every graphing calculator has its own little ways of doing things. Uh, most of them, however, are pretty straightforward. You can just go to y equals, type in your equation, and you get a picture by pressing the graph button. So our graph is going to look something like this. So I'm just going to turn my calculator on make sure I've got the right equation typed in, press the graph button, and there it is. Now I'm going to try and uh, draw this down correctly. This is approximately negative 5 here, and I used what's called a standard window. A standard window means negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis, negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis. And my graph looks something like this. It seems to cross here at 3, or negative 3 rather, and looks like sort of in between here, and it sort of has a vertex down here somewhere. Now, I just eyeballed that off the calculator. Um, however, that's more or less what the picture should look like. Now, that is a picture of the function y equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 3, how is that going to help us answer this specific equation? Well, the only thing different between this and this is that where we have equals 0, we now have equals y. So let me just write that underneath here. Um, what we have is 0 equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. So what we're saying is the y value specifically is 0. Now, what points on my graph have a y value specifically equal to 0? Well, those are commonly called the x-intercepts, but they're also called zeros. So um, those are the points that we would like to find. The x-intercepts or zeros are going to be the solutions to this specific equation. And why is that? 
Again, I stress it's because we are making the y value zero, which is what the original equation demanded of us. So we're now in a position to just go ahead on our graphing calculator and try to figure out specifically what these points are. Now I'm going to go through the process of finding these uh, on what is a Texas Instruments calculator. If you're using a different calculator, you'll have to look up in the guidebook the different um, ways of finding these specific points. I imagine most of it will be very similar. Um, to find these specific points on the Texas Instruments, we end up having, having to, first of all, graph the, uh, the equation, get our picture, and then you go second function, followed by um, trace, and that pulls up a whole bunch of different choices, and the one that we're after um, is number two, which says zero. And see if it says zero or zeros. No, nope, it just says zero, and that's number two. You make that choice, and then it goes back to the graph screen. Now, suppose we target the one on the left here first. What the calculator will then ask of you is it will say, identify the left boundary. Now, to understand the way this calculator works, it says, here is where the zero or x-intercept is, first of all, tell me where would be a point to the left of that. And in this case, that means you would position the cursor up here somewhere, because that is to the left side of where we believe the zero is. So we would do that with the little arrow keys, remove the cursor over to the left somewhere, and then hit enter. Then it says right boundary, so we position the cursor somewhere to the immediate right side, which in this case would be down here somewhere. So again, you move it down with the arrow and hit enter. And then it says guess. Um, we don't guess, we just hit enter one more time, and then it tells us specifically the coordinates of this zero. And so that point has an x value of negative 3 and, of course, a y value of 0. So what that tells us now is that that is one of our solutions. If we put negative 3 in here for x, then this whole thing will equal 0. So that's how you find your solution. So one of our solutions, I'll just put them up here. We have x is negative 3. And the other solution, I'm now going to repeat the process on the calculator to identify what this is. It looks like it's positive one half. Um, but let's find out for sure. So I go second function, trace, okay, this step again. I choose number two, which is zero, and I position the cursor somewhere to the left side of where this zero is. Somewhere down here would be perfect. Let's move my cursor over to there and hit enter. And then it says right boundary, so I move my cursor somewhere to the right side, which would be up there somewhere. Okay, and I hit enter, and hit enter again, so that now it tells me, yep, it turns out 0.5 is the other zero. So these are the two points we've identified using the calculator, and those are the two x values that are solutions to our original equation. And that's pretty much um, all there is to the method of solving by graphing. Sometimes, the only thing that I, I will say uh, that makes things look perhaps a little different, and I won't do specific examples, but let me just show you what you can run into. You can run into some that look like this. Suppose you went and graphed it, and it seems like maybe it crosses, uh, oh, let's say here, two. But it doesn't actually cross, it just seems to touch. How do we interpret that? Well, technically, this is the point to zero. So indeed, we do have a solution there. Uh, the y value is zero, and the corresponding x value is two. Um, often, the way this is interpreted is to say that we have two equal solutions of x equals two. Now, why is that? 
Um, there's a lot of reasons why we like to say that there is uh, that there are two equal solutions as opposed to oh there's just the one solution of x equals two. The I'll keep it very simple. The main reason is if you have quadratic equations, you should either have a maximum of two solutions or you should have no solutions at all if we're working with real numbers. So you you should really always have either two or none. To have one, it makes us think of a linear equation. Linear equations often will have, well, most linear equations will have the one solution. So it's not much of a reason, but it's not wrong if you just said one solution of x equals two in this case, uh, but often you'll find in, a, in the textbook it will speak of two equal solutions, means the same thing. <clears throat> How do you identify this? on your calculator, if you have what you think is this situation, you should use a slightly different approach. On the Texas Instruments, the approach would be this. Second function, trace, and this time don't choose zero. Okay, what you should choose is minimum. So you choose minimum instead. Now minimum means the lowest point. And now it will tell you when you choose minimum to identify the left boundary or the left side of your minimum. So we put the cursor something like that, hit enter, and then it will ask for the right side. So we would say, okay, somewhere over here is to the right side of our minimum and hit enter and then hit enter again. And then it would identify the X and the Y coordinates of this lowest point. If the lowest point has a y value of zero, then we know we actually have a solution there. Had this been something like 0.1, then what that means is the graph is actually not touching, it's slightly above, in which case we would have no solutions. Because if you end up with a situation like this, where your graph doesn't actually touch, then you have no solutions. There are no places where the y has a value of zero. Y is always above zero as far as real numbers are concerned. So watch for that. Slightly different strategy there um, if you think it's just touching at the one point. Other than that, that is how we solve by graph.